Well, welcome back to the Shifting Schools podcast. Our eSports and gaming mini series continues, and we've got yet another outstanding guest for you. Let me introduce you to the amazing Janie Laney, who happens to be the founder of Black Minecraft, the DEI safety advisor in Metaverse. She's a content creator. She's a professional speaker. And she has brought us so much wisdom about Minecraft and more. She has me thinking about how Minecraft is an entry point to lead conversations we need to have. As a live, live streamer, she talks a lot about what it takes to build a community and what we can do with our platforms. So if you have students who are interested in live streaming for educational purposes, or are interested to be thinking about what they might do with their platform or how they might build community, I can't think of a better guest than Janie Laney to introduce them to. I think you're really gonna enjoy this week's conversation. And now let's get on with the show. In episode one of your podcast, Black Minecraft, listeners, of course, that's going to be linked over there in the show notes, you talk about your vision for Minecraft as an instrument for change in multiple different ways. As the founder of Black Minecraft, you aren't just describing the change, you are personally enacting it. I'm wondering if you can talk to our listeners about the leadership. And again, I know it's like multifaceted, so many different directions <laughs> um, that you have been offering through Minecraft. Um, so, yes, uh, there's so many ways that Minecraft in itself can be utilized, but I decided to not only use Minecraft to connect with people through streaming and just general gameplay, but I also use it to like lead the conversation um, on the topics that we need to talk about. And I do often include children in these conversations. So um, one of the ways that I have taken upon uh, using Black Minecraft Black Minecraft as a leadership type of role is when we just talk about education, um, letting people know that, you know, a lot of times minorities, uh, specifically black and brown people are often like with the children, they're often not given the proper introduction into uh, technology. So I utilize Black Minecraft, my initiative, as well as Minecraft, the game, in order to expose more children to the possibilities of everything that they could create in Minecraft and to talk to the parents about it. Like Minecraft, although it's a game, is actually one of the closest games that you could get into learning how to code, into actually being introduced into the world of technology as a whole. Um, I've seen so many different people utilize Minecraft by ways of learning how to build drones, learning how to uh, make actual digital art, and really learning how to connect. So what I've done with Black Minecraft was I took it to the people that need it the most. I took it to the people that suffer from the educational gap, which I'm Black. So although my personal schooling experience wasn't as bad. I know a lot of these schools that are bad. So I was like, hmm, what can I do? Well, I stream family-friendly content. Why not utilize Black Minecraft as a way of speaking to more like Black and Brown kids? So, um, so often I would actually teach chemistry in Minecraft. Um, we would go ahead and set aside time and I would teach like all these black and brown kids chemistry, we would be blowing stuff up in there. <laughs> but it was a great way to actually connect. And then I talked to the parents and the parents there, they may not know everything about video games, but they've actually understood the gap with my initiative. Like they've understood why I wanted to do what I wanted to do. So 
it's been it's been like that. <laughs> it's fantastic. And, you know, I, I think in K-12 education, we have seen um, sort of uh, library audits are very popular, right? This idea of let's make sure our classroom libraries are intersectional. We have representation. And mm -hmm. I was amazed to learn through producing this series that, you know, the book, the TV, the movie industry, the music industry, they are all smaller than the gaming industry like that boggled my mind. So, you know, if we do <laughs> not have representation in the biggest industry in the world, we have to be having that conversation and, and you started it. I appreciate you bringing up having conversations with parents, too, because if there are parents who have never seen Minecraft before, um, you know, we actually talked in an earlier episode about how there's a lot of misconceptions around games that like they're a waste mm -hmm. of time or, you know, they encourage violence. Like there's a moral panic around it. Right. And oh, uh, yes. I I'm wondering actually, you know, do our most parents that you're talking to really surprised about the power of not just Minecraft, but gaming more broadly actually as an avenue for, you know, you've mentioned connection, community, belonging. Mm -hmm. um, do they seem really surprised and shocked? Or do you feel like the conversation is moving away from that stance of like moral panic, games are bad, etc.? cetera? Um, I'm 50-50 on it. So I'm 30. Um, so I remember growing up, um, like I've always played video games since I was two, but I remember growing up and seeing those commercials. Remember those commercials um, <laughs> that were like, it was like the commercials were protesting against gaming. Like it was, you would have thought that gaming was going to end the world. Um, but I still see a 50, 50 side of, of, of this. And the reason why I see a 50 50 is because there are still giant gaps being presented in the gaming industry that then follows why certain parents think certain ways. So for instance, all right, there's a lot of women who are against video games. There are. Um, when you go onto social media, you will see women talking about their partners playing a video game and they don't like that. And th th because the stigma was for the longest time that women should not be playing video games. So there are several women who are now parents that did not get exposed to video games when they were younger. So now as parents, they still don't get it. So for them, it is more of a shocker when I do make the correlation and when I even even like have kids present to their parents, hey, this is what I did in Minecraft. I, they still have that shock mm -hmm. value. It's not, but it's not angry anymore, which is great. It's just like, oh, really? Huh? Well, what else can you do? So it's more of like a discoverability moment mm -hmm. with some parents. Um, with other parents, oh, they're all for it. They will sit there and play that game with their kids too. They're like, oh, how, how do I get on? <laughs> teach me like you know so it's i feel like the the conversations as long as they continue then we're going to move towards better but they need to continue and that's why i strive to make sure that you know k through 12 um i'm going to i'm going to be honest with you especially between kindergarten and fifth grade that younger generation that younger age of schooling of children, making sure that they're getting properly exposed and that their parents are. So in that way, you know, a pipeline could be built, could start being built in these schools where, oh, hey, your child really likes video games or, you know, maybe your child really likes science. Well, here's a great hands-on approach to how we could facilitate some learning. Take it from elementary school on up. And then by the time that they graduate, whether they want to go to college or don't want to go to college, they might have in their mind, hey, I can really do whatever I want to do in life. And I got exposed to video games. Huh? I kind of like science. So then you're going to have more, um, you're going to have more, more women, more people of color getting into sciences, getting into engineering. So for me, it's like, if we continue to have these conversations, they're going to go from, oh, I didn't know to let my, let me put my child in that more to let me interact with my child when my child is playing video games, when they're up there playing Fortnite. Oh, I I'm going to play Fortnite with them, you know, so it's it's all a 
it's all a process. It's getting there, but it, you know, it's all yeah. a process. And I, I totally appreciate that idea that like we need to sustain a dialogue. We need to sustain a, a conversation. Um, I, I'd like to kind of pivot and talk a little bit about the skill sets involved. You've got so much experience. And again, <laughs> listeners, head over to the show notes, learn more about all of the different things that you have done. And, oh, um, you know, the, the way in which your work has been recognized is huge. You know, you've been featured on the Xbox uh, Twitch live stream. Minecraft has featured you on their YouTube channel. And it's not... Uh, for a lack of like hard work and you really honing so mm. many different skill sets, you know, I think even sometimes we <laughs> underestimate the presentation skills involved when uh -huh. you're being a, like, you know, a live streamer too, you know, like <laughs> this podcast, I have the opportunity to edit later on. So there's not the pressure on me that, you know, that you have often where you've got a huge <laughs> live audience. Um, you know, you offer mentorship too to folks who are coming up in the industry. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you can just kind of reveal behind the curtain, what are some of the skills that have been really important okay. for you to develop that I appreciate you mentioned earlier? Like if you want to make it far in this industry, you need to have opportunity and, and also like have your curiosity mm -hmm. kind of tapped into when you're young. So yes. Younger students, like what could they start working on today <laughs> that's related to like your whole arsenal of skills that you've needed? <laughs> well, one of the things that I would say is uh, don't ever feel like you're too talkative. If you are a talkative student, see, I was chatty, chatty Kathy in, in school. Like I used to actually get in trouble a lot because I'll just be still, I will. One of my teachers told me if I were to talk to a cockroach, we would be friends. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you're right. Because I would always be talking. But one of the best skill sets for being a live streamer, for being a, a content creator as a whole, for doing things like being on panels and being featured and everything is the ability to have a conversation and sometimes it's just the ability to have a conversation with new people. So I would say, you know, for all the students who are possibly looking into getting into broadcasting, whether it be you might want to be a news anchor. At one point in time, I did want to be a news anchor. <laughs> so, you, you know, you, you might want to be a news anchor. You might want to be an announcer. You might want to just like tell your story. You need to be able to start talking with a diversified group of people. So if there's like maybe that student in your class that, you know, doesn't really talk to a lot of people, have a conversation with them. Um, I've learned so much that just the the simple conversation, like maybe you might see something in common that you have with somebody. Maybe your hair is curly like their hair. or Maybe you just really like their shirt. Like have a conversation with them about it. Don't don't be afraid because with content creation, boy, 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 there is a lot that can be scary. You sometimes you have to face bullies without having to have a mental breakdown. Sometimes you, you are talking to somebody who's maybe from a different country and you have to learn how to pick up on certain social cues or, or just not being afraid to ask people questions. So being able to actually have a conversation, being able to converse with different people, that would be the biggest, um, the biggest. Another thing would be, um, to, you know, learn, learn about sound, hmm. learn, learn about how you want to sound in your content. Um, a lot of times when people start off with content creation, they don't have a team to help. There's no team to help and you have to figure it out yourself. Learning how to get on YouTube <laughs> and figure things out, you know, researching, finding out maybe what type of mic do you want to have? Like, how do you want your sound to be? You know, how do you want people to to understand your thought processes? You know, like it's it's all about trying to put stuff together yourself. So just like really not being afraid to do trial and error. And like those are the, the best things that I could ever offer somebody because to be honest with you, when people get into content creation, they think that you have to have the best internet. Not true. I started off streaming on a platform that was called Mixer. It was Microsoft's platform. I was actually uh, hijacking somebody's Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Don't recommend because I think that that might be illegal. <laughs> but, you know, I was using the, the neighbor's Wi-Fi to stream. My streams would often be like very crusty and just pixelated. But I was still talking and that's what people loved. I was still having 200 people in my stream while my stream was looking like it was dripping off off of monitors like it was bad but i just kept talking kept having fun and people could hear me clearly because some people said oh see look at that look 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 and don't be afraid when things happen because (sighs) a whole entire poster (laughs) so yeah so that that is like really just what it's all about be yourself learn learn what you can continue to learn um and just just do it. Just go. Just talk. Well, you know, I when you're talking about the art of the conversation, of course, there's the listening piece in that that like sometimes I feel like gets undervalued. You know, like we have things like debate club, like speech club, but yes. you're a really good example of uh, you know, not just, of course, like listening, thinking about your audience, but also when you had that opportunity with Xbox for Black History Month. You took that as an opportunity to say, I want to do this collaboratively. Can you talk to our listeners a little bit about that? Because <laughs> I think, you know, part of what you're saying as a like a presenter, a streamer, I think audiences also are really good today about recognizing authenticity, maybe, because we have so much choice, right? Like, yes. you know, a platform like Twitch, it's not like, oh, there's just a few people for me to choose from. It's like, you know, I don't thousands. I don't even know. Um, So can can you talk a little bit about that choice and how in my mind, that choice also really signifies how important you think it is to listen. So I am the type of person where when given an opportunity, I bring, I bring people all the time. I, I am known to um, when I get invited somewhere, I ask, where's my plus one? I am very direct in that respect because I have like, so the art of networking is why I am how I am. Mm. When you go through life and you meet people that you really mesh with in future, you're going to think about those people when opportunities present themselves. So when I was given the opportunity uh, to stream on Xbox's channel, um, I was, I was happy Uh, But I wasn't thinking about myself. I was just, I just knew that I was a vessel and vessels need people on Mm. it. So my thought process, I I did a call out on Twitter a little bit. And I also talked to my friends and I was like, listen, I need all my black and brown people to pull up. All right. It's black history month. Don't try me. You guys better, you guys better come play. (laughs) <laughs> because I wanted people to get exposed to more content creators, get exposed to more players that they may resonate with, or if they don't at the time, they could get to know and find out what type of things they have in common. And when I do any type of piece that is supposed to gain some type of exposure, I always am trying to like make sure that it's not just going to increase my exposure, but that it's going to facilitate my goals, but also bring about other people. Like it's, it's all a current like that. I look at this as currency, not money, but as actual currency where I am supposed to go and do something, but when I do something, I cannot stop the flow. It does not end with me. It doesn't sit well with me when I'm offered an opportunity and nobody else can, um, because essentially that's what leads to gatekeeping. Mm -hmm. So for me to be able to get onto Xbox's Twitch, I was thinking to myself, I've seen other people do this. I've seen them have fun, but one thing that I haven't seen was their friends. I haven't seen the other people. I haven't seen people that like, you know, that they talk to every single day that help encourage them. I just see them usually by themselves. So I thought about it. I was like, you know what? We're going to make a change. 
I want to get as many people to come play with me as possible. I want people to hear other people's voices. I want people to know that for, since I'm talking about black history, since I'm talking about making a change in gaming, I don't want people to just see one singular black person and be like, oh yeah, it's black history month. Yeah. That person's being featured. No, we're having a whole entire party in Minecraft. I'm trying to show you different people's skins. I'm trying to show you like the actual ecosystem that I have helped to facilitate. I'm really trying to expose you to the culture. And that is what's very vital and important. When I see people on their streams and I see people doing like round tables with all their friends, you're getting to not only experience their personality, not only experience their friends' personalities, but you're able to experience actual conversation actual discussions you're able to really like sit in a stream and have a full experience of whatever topic they're talking about versus it just being one-sided where you're just watching a streamer talk to a camera which hey that's fun i like to do that too but when you can have multiple people with you it makes the conversation stronger so that's why i did that like i i had a whole entire like thought process behind it because i was like everybody's going to get some kind of exposure you know this is going to be good this is going to be fun um and it's also a great way for xbox to also see what awesome players actually are playing on their system that's that's beautiful and in my mind that's true leadership you know you mentioned gatekeeping and, and to me that's the test of a true leader is are you hoarding power or are you building power collectively. So I, I'm wondering, you know, I, I'm guessing you've got an audience with a huge age range. Do you do you mm -hmm. feel like the audience picked up on that? Like, do you think they because I, I mean, <laughs> it, like that is amazing, I think, role modeling for young gamers who would love to have a, a platform like yours. Do you think they picked up on on that as an intentional choice? Um, so I tell people that I'm a family-friendly content creator. I tell them, don't cuss in my chat. I tell them sometimes quite often, don't cuss in my chat. <laughs> you know, I can play Call of Duty. And I would still say, don't cuss in my chat. And they'll be like, well, this is a mature game. Don't care. I'm too young to see the cuss words. <laughs> like, I would tell them, don't do that. But I always let people know um, that... I'm a very welcoming individual, but I strive to make sure that children can have a safe place to not only watch content, but to also speak to other people. I'm very big on making sure that children are safe on the Internet. Um, so everybody does realize that there is um, an intentional age difference amongst all my audience. But what uh, the th the thought process behind that was more so I don't want to lose people. Um, if you start talking to children and start allowing them to, you know, be themselves, you're, you're telling them that their ideas are great and you're just like, you know, really encouraging them, then they will become those type of adults in the future. Like I'm always thinking about planting the seed and watching it grow. So for me, everything that I do is intentional. Everything I do is intentional. Uh, me deciding that I want to be a family friendly content creator. I made that decision within only a few months of streaming nice places to really watch streams at, but there's a lot of children watching streams. There's unfortunately a lot of children who are used to watching streams where the streamer is cussing out the chat, where the streamer um, is rude to children on online gameplay, where the streamer is speaking heavily sexually to the audience and you don't know who's in the audience. You know, we, we have so many content creators out there and I'm not saying that adult content is bad. Like I'm not saying that whatsoever, but at the same time, we have a lot of content creators out there who don't care who's in their audience. So when something happens, it's, it's kind of difficult because it's like, well, you see how they were running their stream before. You see how they were talking to to their streams. So, in a in like, I feel bad when kids get roped into that. 
But sometimes kids still find these content creators as their favorite content creator. And then you have conventions and then like just weird stuff happens. So like for me, I'm just like, look, I want to eliminate all that as much as I can. I just want to be welcoming and inviting to anyone that wants to watch the stream. Treat everyone as a human. Make sure that the children in my stream are safe. I will easily, if there if there's people arguing in the chat, I will easily sh shut that down. I, I don't have time for that because that's not, you know, that's not something I want to facilitate. But also at the same time, I, I also let people know, hey, there's children in the chat. Now, yes, occasionally we will have more kind of like adult uh, conversations, not like raunchy or anything like that, but sometimes we do have adult conversations. I do let people know, hey, right now we're having more of an adult conversation if you uh, are a parent. Um, your child may or may not be good right now in the stream, you know, um, I, I do let people know that I'm very transparent, but for the most part, I'm just really just welcoming to people of all ages. Cause why not? I, I love what you're saying about these intentional choices and really thinking about who your audience is and honoring that. And, you know, again, you are not just a live streamer. Uh, we mentioned Black Minecraft, the podcast, which, correct me if this is wrong, has sort of evolved into Hustling Blocks, which features guests. Yes. Who, again, we're <laughs> talking about Minecraft and how you can leverage it in many different ways. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, for folks who are not familiar with Minecraft and, you know, I think, you know, you, you mentioned earlier, like, yep, yeah, there's a STEM connection. And some folks might, okay, I'm familiar with that. Like maybe I have a, I have a niece or I, I have a young person in my life who like, oh, I heard their teacher was using it for that. But, um, you know, you, you are really, I think, trying to totally expand our imagination for what the possibilities are, are there for. Can you talk about what you're doing with that programming and some of the intentional <laughs> choices you've made in that space too? Yes. So uh, we will be having some episodes come up of where I decided to interview educators who uh, utilize Minecraft as well as a student who actually was in one of New York's first pilot programs of utilizing Minecraft for education. And just for them to have decided to get into this program, their ninth grade year, their freshman year during the pandemic, mind you, to decide to get into that program and to like see everything that they've been learning. But um, when it comes down to using Minecraft for education, oh my gosh, there's so much. So there's actually a product called Minecraft Education Edition. Um, which facilitates even more abilities to do coding, um, to do art design, to learn history, all different types of stuff. Like you can learn about geography and environment, uh, learning how to sustain uh, uh, environmental and sustainability efforts. Um, there's so much stuff, but like I've really enjoyed interviewing people who are using these products because it gives the audience a better thought process of maybe what they can do. It's one thing to hear somebody say, oh yeah, you know, you could use Minecraft for education. It's another thing to actually hear an educator explaining why they chose to use it. It's another thing to hear a student explaining what they have gained from it, what they hope to gain from it, and how they are encouraging other students to utilize this program. So it's, it's really great. Like there are, oh my God, it's, it's amazing because it just exposes children and their parents and educators into the possibilities that can happen from the video game. And it's not just, oh, well, you know, I learned how to code, yada, 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 no, no, no. No, a lot of these students are learning how to actually create their own websites mm -hmm. because of the foundations of coding that they learned within Minecraft Education Edition. There's actually um, a school in New York where they started off the children with Minecraft Education Edition. And a lot of them are learning how to make drones, like program the drones and everything. And it's it's such a broad uh, broad spectrum of things that can be learned using Minecraft and Minecraft Education Edition that it's like, why not? Like, architects use Minecraft 
in order to create, you know, uh, better pathways so that children could get to schools, could get to their homes better. So like this, this Minecraft as a whole is like a lifelong journey of learning. So like, I, I mean, honestly, like my hustling vlog series, it's, it's going to cover more people who use Minecraft every day for not so typical, uh, not so typical things, things that you might not have thought about. Um, and I'm excited to be able to, to show people that and to show it from people who are of the black and brown minorities. I, cause it's a little bit different yep. when you're like, wait, this black person's doing this. What the heck? <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that's fantastic. And, you know, I think that expansiveness and that creativity, I mean, Minecraft's been around for a while now too, right? And to see its evolution is amazing. And I, I think part of that evolution, which, you know, the work that you're doing points to is there's a really generous community who I think are very yes. passionate about what they're doing and are almost leaving like a breadcrumb trail so you can learn. Um, I mean, like, you know, there's, there's just a huge community online where folks can, I've never done this before. Here's great tutorials that, you know, are mm -hmm. going to help you get started. And then I think encourage you to experiment. And that has been, you know, as I'm speaking with folks like you, I feel like it comes up again and again and again, like that network and how tight mm -hmm. it is and how folks genuinely want to support one another. And I'm, I'm kind of wondering, is there a game that you play that um, either you have learned about from your network or is there somebody in your network who kind of inspires or, or motivates you? I'm just I'm kind of wondering, like you give so oh, much to the gosh, network so much. I know I hate to there's put you on so... the spot and say, <laughs> but how, um, how has the network been helpful for you? Like you're giving so much to it. But I'm wondering, mm -hmm. like, how do you also um, how are you continuing to be like, I love you brought up <laughs> lifelong learning. Uh, is that uh, <sighs> does it work both ways for you? <sighs> <laughs> that's a funny question isn't it um well okay so to be transparent <laughs> to be transparent um not all the community is like that to be transparent um and i'm just being 100 percent honest whenever it comes down to being a person of color whenever it comes down to being a woman it is not always reciprocated with you put in and uh that could be very disheartening it can be very frustrating at times but there are always great people. Um, so one of the people that uh, within the Minecraft network that have inspired me would be Joe Hills. So Joe Hills is the creator of Hermitcraft, which uh, Joe Hills is a very known person. It's funny because I didn't know who he was when we first had a conversation. <laughs> but I found out who he was when he had raided me on Twitch and I was like, there's people like what is this like the whole entire time i'm I, I the whole entire time me and him we were just talking about the issues with um diversity equity and inclusion within the minecraft space we we had a sidebar conversation and so like when he raided me i was everybody's like yeah it's joe hills i'm like don't know who that is i mean i know who he is but okay you know but it was funny because i didn't realize he had amassed like this huge following um but he actually has inspired me to continue to have the conversations regardless of whether or not I feel like things are being reciprocated back. Um, he often has great conversations while he's streaming. He does um, a lot of, you know, just like just building um, some exploring and whatnot, but he's always just authentically himself and that is one thing that I really do admire about him. He has a community filled with not just children, but also adults too. So he makes sure that his content isn't like, just like too far out there. He's making sure he can still be relatable. So that is one of the people who I do look up to within the Minecraft community. And another person would have to be Kendra Sight. Um, Kendra Sight. Ken is very so Ken is a he's a family friendly content creator he is very energetic I am not energetic 
as much as him. But um, the energy that he brings, the positivity that he brings is what I truly do love. He's constantly like if, say, for instance, there's people in his chat and maybe they're like, yeah, I didn't have such a good day. He'd be like, OK, well, you know, let's talk about it. And, you know, do you want to come play with me? Like things like that. Like he's very like really nice with his community where he just wants them all to grow together. He wants them all to be able to mature together and really like get through a lot of successful days, uh, regardless of maybe whether or not you're having a not so up there day. You know, he wants you to be able to leave his stream having a better outlook on your day. So like those are two people that really do, um, they really have inspired me within the Minecraft ecosystem. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, as you're talking again about folks having a community like there to hopefully like leave the stream feeling a little bit better than they did when they started. I'm wondering for you, you know, you've been at this for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like your sense of some of your goals with your with your streaming have switched up evolved um is there any practice that you do now that's different from like day one when you first began yes yeah, so i unfortunately have gone through platform changes uh where the first platform change was because mixer went down and we had to all the content creators had to figure out where they're gonna go um so that's uh that changed a lot because i used to have mainly children in my chat. Then it started getting into kind of more of a mixed variety, like a very mixed variety. There are some days where I don't have any kids in my chat, or at least none that are talking. Um, some things that I have changed up um, is that I've been doing... I've been doing more, um, more advocating in other areas than just my stream. And I've had to do that because after we lost our platform, I kind of realized that I was kind of just tied to doing most things on a platform, on a streaming platform, but wasn't doing well, I don't feel like I was doing enough off platform. I don't feel like I was really networking enough to my fullest abilities. Um, so one thing that I started to do was um, I actually started getting on LinkedIn. Hmm. I know that's a really weird thing, <laughs> but I, I started getting onto LinkedIn. I started branching out more. Um, and what I started to do is in streams, I would also sometimes go over LinkedIn and actually show people how to use it. Talking to a lot of like our teenagers, like, hey, you guys are all getting to the point of where you're starting to graduate. You're starting to get into these programs. Let's go ahead and talk about LinkedIn and talk about how you can utilize LinkedIn to start building your network. So by the time you are ready to go ahead and graduate, what have you, um, it, it might help out when you do decide to go off to college because you are going to be a little bit more social to people who are, you know, different than you. Or maybe you don't want to go to college and you have this really extensive network where you're able to get directly into the industry of your choice. So I've started to kind of add more tools, more days where we start doing some tools, um, more days of where I'm talking to um, children of all ages about, you know, what kind of education do they like? So uh, there's like a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of kids that will come into my stream and they'll be like, you taught me more than my teacher taught me. And I'm like, well, you know, that's the goal. So we do things where say for instance, somebody brings up a topic and I'm really itching to talk about it. I'm like, okay guys, we're going into research mode. And then we'll like, like I'll be on Google researching. We'll see like, cross-reference videos and then we'll go back to Minecraft and still be talking about the conversation so for me I've been just using Minecraft more so as 
a tool to sit around the campfire, so to speak. And then if we, if it gets to us wanting to do research, then we go on to there and then we pivot back. So I've just really been using Minecraft um, even more as just like a tool to have conversations. It used to be just strictly like gameplay, gameplay, but because my audience has changed where I am getting more of a mixed bag of ages, I'm like, hmm. And the fact that, you know, pandemic, like in what ways can I actually use my stream to help people, A, relax, B, be entertained, but then also see how can I help them elevate themselves? I want everyone when they leave my stream to be able to leave with some type of piece of knowledge, have them leave feeling good about themselves. Um, But I also want them to come back with stories of success. So like occasionally people would be like, oh my gosh, I got to tell you something. I'm like, what? And they'll be like, what you suggested that I do, it worked. It really worked. And like, I love to see that. There's a lot of kids that like, they start watching me when they were in ninth grade and they graduated. And they're like giving me a whole entire rendition of how their first year of college went. And I'm like, excuse me, I'm old. (laughs) Help me. (laughs) I'm getting old here. Like, what is this? So like, for me, it's just been changing up how I want to present more knowledge in my stream. Um, So in that way, I won't lose too many uh, parents, um, but also to the point where I'm essentially one of the people that when they started watching when they were a child, now they're an adult, they know that they can like come to me and ask me all different types of questions. They know that it's definitely a safe place, you know, so that's. It's kind of how it's changed. It's just been a little bit more informative. That's beautiful. And I mean, I know this isn't a live stream, but I feel like I am walking uh-huh. away too with a bit of knowledge <laughs> and feeling really great about this conversation because, you know, again, in this series, just learning more and more about how many potential professional pathways are there for students. It seems wild to me that we're not talking about the industry um, more broadly, you know, and so many, every folk, every person actually that we've had on the series, yes. like you, has talked about the joy that they are getting from their work, the, the meaning and the purpose. And that is such a privilege too, you know, to, uh, mm-hmm. to really see that in, in the work that you are doing. So thank you for, for sharing your expertise and thank you for using really the power of your platform for, for good, you know, as cheesy as that sounds. Um, it's It's been an honor to speak with you and listeners. We're going to have lots of links over there in the show notes so that you also can um, connect and learn and recommend to parents and caretakers because, you know, we started this conversation saying they need to know about this too, right? Um, you know, that, mm-hmm. that's an important, I think, three-way conversation. Schools, our young learners, and families, Um Especially, I I don't know if you're seeing this, you know, I'm, I've am i noticed in a variety of different libraries, like I love libraries, that libraries are starting to support with with games and access to. Yes. Um, so, but I, I will say, like, I think unless we're letting families know, you know, this is not just necessarily about fun, even though like fun and entertainment is good for us too. <laughs> it's bigger than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, so just to let you all know, um, I'm actually, um, I'm on the, how do I even know? It's look, I have a title in this, but like the time, I think, I think that she just gave me the title just so it sounds good. But basically (laughs) I am actually part of a nonprofit where we are creating, um, a localized pipeline here in Jacksonville, Florida for educating our youth, um, in underrepresented communities, educating them on um, technology. Okay. Now, I've told people gaming is just technology, it's just the fun part. So, we're actually educating them on gaming and general technology. And our goal is to create a whole entire pipeline that includes the parents all the way through. So, that's why, you know, 
talking about things like video games inside of the schools or how you can utilize video games for education is something that we're doing. But we're also trying to um, actually let uh, these children know about the careers that they can get within gaming and with and within technology and how it not everything is as linear as you think. Um, so yeah, so we are, we're, we're doing what we can to make sure that underrepresented communities understand there is space for you. And even if we have to fight tooth and nail, (laughs) you will be able to succeed. And there's, there's a lot of jobs within the gaming industry that people don't know about because they're not heavily broadcast. So our goal is, Hey, we know those jobs. Let's go ahead do some workshops. Let's go ahead and expose the general community, the public to what can happen in the, in the gaming industry. It's all technology. We're all moving to more technologically advanced society. So let's talk to our underrepresented communities like, Hey, let's go ahead and do this. We don't want anybody to fall behind. Let's go ahead and do this. So. Oh, I, it's all, it's all good. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. That, that community education piece is huge. You know, when I was actually even talking to my, my own parents about this and, you know, they were like, what, what is esports? And so we, you know, like had a conversation <laughs> and they weren't really getting it. And I was like, look, look up any university. They offer scholarships. They have teams. And my parents were like, what? Like, you know, disbelieving. <laughs> and, right. um, yeah, I think, you know, telling these stories, getting that information out there is massive is huge um you know i'm I'm guessing actually we might have a few listeners who are hearing what you are saying and they're thinking i'd love to connect with that nonprofit. i'd love to learn more Mm -hmm. about you know how i can maybe find a guest speaker for our parent caretaker audience what might be a good way to reach out to you or to reach out to your nonprofit? okay um so the nonprofit is called global patch that is G L O B A L P A T C H. If you go to globalpatchgaming.com, um, we are just now launching our uh, website, but you can also um, you can also speak to us via LinkedIn, um, which is good. Or you you could really send me a message on Twitter if you needed to at underscore Janie Laney, J A N E Y L A N E Y. Um, but we can definitely uh, correspond, let you know what types of programming because we have some bomb programming we have some great programming and some of it is virtual which is really great um we have some great programming coming up um we are am i allowed to i think i'm allowed to say that um we are partnering um with uh with ea um and you know some other some other places in order to facilitate a great workshop like Q and A hands on type of approach into various areas of the gaming and tech industries, and um, yeah, our goal is to make sure that those underrepresented communities not only that they're getting the knowledge, but that they feel like there's sustainability within the industry because. There's a pipeline because there's multiple, you know, there's multiple events. So, like, uh, I actually had just suggested that we do a manga creation workshop where where we teach kids how to make their own manga. Cool. And for those of you guys who do not know this, like a Japanese anime comic book, um, you know, um, that those skill sets, learning about art, learning about design, learning about narratives. All of those things go into gaming. All those things go into technology. All the, they could go into like storyboarding for a movie. Like there's so many different things. So we're going to be offering so many ways for children, especially to get in touch with their skill sets, either that they already have or that they want to learn. And of course, bring the parents with you. So. Oh, I love that. Again, it's going to be great. All that information (laughs) is going to be over there in the show notes. Thank you again for taking the time to come on this show and share your wisdom with us. We look forward to continuing to uh, watch what you do with your platform. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Mm -hmm.